but I'd like to welcome to the stage Mark Blaney. Good evening, Aberystwyth! <laughs> it's fantastic to be here with you this evening and to see such a fantastic, warm, friendly crowd. Now, you're probably asking yourselves, what is this evening going to be about? I don't know. Let's find out as we go through. The, there'll probably be a bit of poetry, maybe a bit of comedy, probably a bit of audience participation. You've chosen very bad seats to sit in there, if you don't mind me saying so. Um, but what we'll do, I'll tell you what, what we'll do to begin with. Um, now, most poetry readings begin with a bit of yoga, don't they? So what we're going to do, uh, everyone who's able and willing to, let's all, I think we need a bit of bonding, don't we? So everybody who would like to stand up, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on stand up. Look, come on, now anybody... You expect this at a poetry reading. Come on, admit it. You know you do. Now, okay. So we're going to do a bit of we're going to do a bit of yoga and just uh, now relax, relax. We we'll just limber up a little bit. Uh, don't worry about anything. Just follow my lead. I absolutely promise you this is perfectly straightforward and easy. Anybody can do it. As I present for you this evening, yoga for seagulls. <laughs> Lift a leg. Raise a wing. Maintain this position. Concentrate on a point to your left and right simultaneously. You can do this anywhere. A beach, a roll of green, a cliff top. Change leg. Ignore the pigeon. Envious of your long, slender limb, the impressive reach of your wingspan. Change position, adopt the flamingo. Downward crane. Concentrate and realize you are flying. <laughs> there we go. Yoga for seagulls, everyone. Now, most seagulls don't actually get involved in that kind of thing, but uh, we like to do things a little bit differently here in Aberystwyth, don't we? And uh, what I, I thought I'd um, tell you a little bit about what I'm working on at the moment. Uh, I'm doing a series of poems about grumpy poets. Now, you might be thinking, how on earth, with such a wide variety could he to choose from, could he possibly narrow that down to two or three for us this evening? Well, let's start with the Poet Laureate, uh, Mr. Simon Armitage. The Poet Laureate goes to the zoo. I walk slowly so as not to jeopardise my chances of looking deep in a leopard's eyes. They say that poetry is serious and not fun, and you never have a laugh. But over there's a lion having a giraffe. <laughs> Luke, I'm in a book. Written by a zoo beast, the penguin book of contemporary poets from the northeast. As I am a Yorkshireman of dry persiflage, I wear camel coloured combats, that's camouflage. <laughs> Sometimes people want puns in my verse, but I'll not pander to that. <laughs> Nothing worse. Sometimes I'm energetic, dancing like a moth, but sometimes my rhymes are rather lazy, like a sloth. <laughs> Over there is a re-articulated python. That's John Cleese writing a reboot of a particularly poor sitcom. Behind us is Kirk's Dick Dick. He was good at naming things, Kirk. He got that licked. <laughs> Ahead of me is a zebra crossing out lines about which he is uncertain, about which he has legitimate doubt. And here is a white-faced whistling duck. I can't think of a rhyme for that. <laughs> Just my luck. 
If you want to see a bison, I'll give you a steer. They say the zoo is expensive. Well, certainly those robot could do. <laughs> Zoos are marvellous places. They leave us amazed, entranced, agog. Just don't do as I did and tread on a yellow banded poison dart tree frog. <laughs> My feet are really hurting now. I should have worn crocs. But I come from Leeds, where we wear sandals and socks. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Obviously, uh, for the geographers in the audience, Simon Armitage doesn't come from Leeds. He comes from Huddersfield and southwestern Leeds. And in fact, he didn't even grow up in Huddersfield. He grew up in Marsden, southwest of Huddersfield. But uh, and Leeds isn't even in the northeast, is it? But you know. <laughs> We're in Wales now, and aren't we? And nobody gets anything wrong about Wales, do they? So, you know, we're all right, aren't we? Yeah. Right, um, so who's second on the Grumpy Poets list? Well, uh, it's probably time for a prop. Here we go. I won't be able to see anything when I put the prop on. So you're just gonna have to go with me. Now, has everybody seen, okay, so has everyone seen the film The Fly? Yes. No, no, that's good audience participant. I'm gonna be picking on you later, no. Okay, so for the people who have seen The Fly, uh, this is what happens when Bob Dylan and Dylan Thomas get into the machine in The Fly, okay? And I present for you good people of Aberystwyth. For the first time ever, Bob Dylan Thomas. <laughs> to begin at the beginning. It is a cold, dark, moonless night in the cold, dark village. Black, slow black, crow black, 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 Bible black. <laughs> For the times they are a changing. <laughs> Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man. Ah, uh, it's very, uh, it's very good to be with you here in Aberyst with, uh, I would try to get into a church gig in Exeter the other night, knocking on Devon's door. <laughs> My mother wasn't very pleased with me because of all the flowers that I ripped up from her garden. I said, don't worry, Ma, I'm only weeding. I went on a boat the other day <coughs> to go to see my old underground house. Or, as P&O described it, a subterranean homesick cruise. <laughs> they say the twist of fate is a good record. I've just drunk 39 whiskies. I think that's the record. Well, thank you very much, people of Everest with. <laughs> Grumpy Poets. Grumpy Poets, now, obviously you can't do you can't do a performance about grumpy poets uh, without picking the wrong glasses and doing some improvisation while you try to find the right glasses. Oh, what are you doing there? I can't see what I'm doing. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, professional. I'll improvise, I'll do it with the same glasses. <coughs> Poem for John Cooper Clark. <coughs> Different part of Yorkshire. I met my wife on a number nine bus. I was instantly consumed with claustrophobic lust. She said, this sounds like an all-time mare. I said, would you like to continue this discussion upstairs? 12 minutes on top of an aging route master. As the bus stopped at red lights, the bus went faster. We wanted sex to be meaningful and dwelled in the light of a topless carriage. Can't do it with those. <laughs> it was a short-lived marriage. We had one child and wanted sex to be love-filled and meaningful. I said, have you met my ex? She wanted children too. 
Oh, I should have heeded the warning. She said, I want to have your kids. I said, I'll bring them round in the morning. <laughs> I broke my neck. They gave me one of them collars that they put on dogs when they've spent all your dollars on shitting and fighting and cuffing on all fours. It keeps you focused, but you can't lick your balls. It's no life, really, for a self-respecting dog like being on page three for an existential god. You could get your breasts out, but no one will believe it. And if they do, they think that they haven't really seen it. It's self-referential poetry, it leaves us all in the dark, so if you don't like it, don't watch John Cooper Clark. Thanks very much. <laughs> all right, let's do, um, it's probably time for a bit of audience participation, isn't it? I think it's time for a bit of audience participation. Who really hates audience participation? Yay! Yay. Okay, fantastic. So, for the audience participation, I would like a volunteer from the audience. From the back of the audience? Yes. No, from anywhere in the audience. Anywhere in the audience at all. Is anybody going to volunteer? No one's going to volunteer. Come on, you'll have to be the volunteer. That's, that's what happens. That's what happens. A round of applause for the volunteer, ladies and gentlemen. This is what happens uh, if you sit at the front. You know, you should know that by now. Come on. I'll just sit at the front. Okay. It's the Green Jumper Club. Right, now. Lady from the audience, what's your name? Emma. Emma, lovely to meet you, Emma. Thank you. Uh, what we're going to do this evening, Emma, uh, I'll put this on here because I need three hands. We're going to, uh, what, what we're going to do, we're going to do the world's first poetry magic trick. Okay? Does that sound pretty, uh, one person likes it. Excellent. Right. So what we're going to do, we're going to do, what I'm going to get you to do, Emma, uh, I'm going to get you to choose a card uh, from the pack of cards. I don't know if you've ever seen anything like this before. Never. Never? Okay. That could be problematical. <laughs> Does that mean I need to choose a different volunteer, Emma? No, it's fine. I think, you're, you're, I think you're kidding me, aren't you? Right, okay. So what we're going to do, I'm going to get you to choose a card from the ordinary pack of cards, Emma. And uh, I am going to... Uh, what I'm probably going to do, this trick very rarely works, is I'm not only am I going to find the card for you, that you select completely at random and show the audience, <laughs> but there will also be, about my person, a poem responding to the card you have chosen. <laughs> Does that sound okay? Okay, people are avaricious. You're excited, I can tell. Okay, so all I want you to do, Emma, all I want you to do is choose a card, choose any card, don't let me influence you. You choose a card. Now, if you've got the card, if you've got the card, don't show me. Show the audience. Show the audience the card. Don't let me see. There's no mirrors. There's nothing exciting around me. Now, all we're going to do, I want you to slip the card back into the pack. Just don't let me see. Just squeeze the card. Squeeze the card into the pack. That's it. That's it, Emma. Well done, Emma. Now, this trick hardly ever works. Uh, I usually say... Um, that this uh, trick was originated by Paul Daniels. But as this is a literary festival, I will say that the first person who did this trick was David Copperfield. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Two people laughed at that one. Fantastic. Now let's see. Let's see, ladies and gentlemen, if I can find the card. Emma, drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> It's not Emma, it's not there. Oh, Emma, by any chance, what's your card? The Queen of Hearts! Yay! Oh my <laughs> Do you know, I did actually seriously start to think, what have I done? <laughs> so, now, I promised you part two to the poetry magic trick about my person. There should be a card <gasps> on which is written, of all the love from Cupid's darts. The finest, loveliest, is the Queen of Hearts! Yeah! Thank you, Emma! Amazing. The world's first and almost certainly last poetry magic trick, everyone. <laughs> Let's do something else. Okay, I'd like to read you, uh, I'd like to read you a couple of poems from my new book. Is it just me, or has this microphone gradually been going further and further down as I think, let's, if we go to about there... Happens all the time. Happens all the time. <laughs> Emma, Emma, you're not supposed to tell everyone that you're a plant and we know each other from the <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. All right. Emma knows all about this. Um, so these are. Uh, the, these poems, The View From My Shed, this is poems about my dad and sheds uh, and my dad's friend and sheds and my son comes in towards the end of these and so I'll do a couple of these. The first one, this one is about ageing and looking forward and looking back. This is called End of Term. Green bags lie pregnant till morning. Vans squeeze yellow lines. It's time for our houses' sabbaticals. They're old, they've earned it. When the students return, they are the same narrow-skinned age. And we, hiding the cracks in our masonry, age another year. People talk of owning houses as if their flesh outlasts brick. The houses own the people letting them off the leash to go out to work. Occasionally, one is sold. The boards on wooden poles appear to say, vote for me, vote for me. Let's think about that next election time. I would vote for sober brick. Modest tile, reflecting window, garden, peacefulness. Let's do one about my dad. Obsessions. Throw nothing away, because one day it will be worth money. Collect everything in sequence and fill the gaps, even if you don't want it. Buy things from Oxfam that you do not need, but which are a bargain. Store them carefully in their original packaging, in a place you cannot find. Put useless objects into jars, subdivided into tranches of uselessness. Build a larger shed to accommodate all the things you will never use. Develop sudden urges to go fishing when family members are due. Fill the garage with overflow from the shed so that the car rusts outside. Make your own wine, which occasionally explodes at night in Jeroboam's and mum thinks it's a war. <laughs> Get faux leather readers digest collections so you can now not read the abridged versions of books you haven't read. <laughs> Talk about getting the shed plumbed so you need never come into the house again. <laughs> Pass on select eccentricities to your son so he will sit in his own shed and remember them. <laughs> And I'll do one, uh, so my son is nine now, imagine he's three or four and he's pottering about uh, down the drive to come and see me in the shed. <coughs> then versus now. On the baddish days, I slink to the shed, raise a heavily filled glass and see my shadow in the window. There's a blackish sky with purple behind that's going to get worse before or if it gets better. The old radio glows, greening my hand. Tom trots on the gravel, looks, calls my name, taps on the blue wood and it's me, 40 years ago, trying to find my dad. I often never did and I'm sure I don't want to be like that for my son. Put the glass down, open the door. The shadow vanishes from the window. I reach down and he climbs me. You were there all the time. People are avarice with. Uh, Michael Caine. Michael Caine was 90 the other day. And not a lot of people know but Michael Caine has just written a collection of poems and I thought I would read uh, one particular gem this evening for you from the volume Not a lot of people know I write poems 
<laughs> and uh, as, is, as is the nature of these things, we, it ties in with the beginning because this one's about seagulls. And it's called, and it's called Seagulls and My Lunch. <laughs> A seagull can detect a chip from three miles away. <laughs> this is because of sensitive nerve endings in its nostrils called Jacobson's organs. I wish Jacobson had taken his sensitive nerve endings and his organs and chosen a different pier to study from three miles away so that I can eat my chips in peace. <laughs> and not get hassled by a seagull what recognised me from last week. <laughs> oh yes. Think on that in your dreams tonight. A seagull can recognise individual humans. Although, if I am now being chosen by seagulls, that means that I no longer need to have a chip on my shoulder. <laughs> or the box, or any fish. And that is my self-preservation society. <laughs> uh, what is even less well known about Michael Caine is that he has just made his first 3D movie. <laughs> now, I don't know if you can see properly, one of them's blue, one of them's red. Michael Caine's first 3D film. And it goes like this. This, this poem, poem is, is in, in, three, three, D, D. <laughs> you, you, do, do, not, not, need, need, special, special, glasses, glasses, two, two, read, read, this, this poem, poem. Or that, or that. If, if, you, you, do, do, ha, ha, do, do. <laughs> where, where, special, special, glasses, glasses. You, you, will, will, see, see, in, in the, the multi, multi coloured, coloured lenses, lenses. <laughs> what, what appears, appears, to, to, be, be, the, the blurred, blurred effect, effect of, of someone, someone doing, doing this, this to you. <laughs> Michael Caine's first 3D film, everyone. Uh, very serious. Uh, I think Judy Dench is in it as well. Um, how are we doing for time, Tom? Dom, are we at yeah. five? Five? Okay. Let's do. Uh, well, I tell you what. It's probably time for audience participation again, isn't it, Emma? Isn't it, Emma? Yeah. Yeah, Emma's up for it. Um, some, so maybe a different person in the audience. This one is not as complicated. <laughs> Let's play Poetry Bingo! <laughs> Somebody anywhere in the room shout out a number between 1 and 64. 28. 28. Good choice. Oh, <laughs> very decisive, wasn't it? Very decisive. Yeah. That was amazing how we, how we got that. Uh, no, I'm not doing that. Uh, um, I mean, I know it's a democracy, but you know that's that's the kind of democracy we've got, isn't it? You know, you you, yeah. you get told that you get a choice, and then they give you what they want to give you anyway. Let's do. Um, I do a Wales one. Uh, this is called Seven Bridge. Driving Wales to England, there's a windsock, so you know which way the wind is blowing. Why is there not one in the opposite direction? In a way, I'm pleased that, like me, even a giant bridge can lose its socks. <laughs> Worse for the bridge, because its ones are bright orange and enormous. I can imagine its mum saying, how on earth could you lose that? <laughs> West of the bridge, we drive through stunning earth, bracken on mountains, ice, blue lakes freeze, Soil compressed by blackened sky, scanning the horizon for a glimpse of the gigantic sofa <laughs> that the sock might be lost behind. <laughs> All right. Let's let's 
do an experiment. It almost certainly won't work. Because these things never work, do they? But let's try, all right? Let's try. Where would we be, where would we be, people of Aberystwyth, <laughs> if we didn't try? Abergavenny. Abergavenny. <laughs> no, I'm not with you, mate. <laughs> what does he mean? Now, you see, it's not going to work, because um, I'll do something different. Who cares? <laughs> Fingerprint doesn't match. <laughs> Here we go. All right, guys, let's try this. <coughs> OK. I do need three hands for this. Let's see if it works. <laughs> Can anyone hear that? Yeah. yeah. OK. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, brethren. Good evening, Emma. Good evening, Aberystwyth. Good day, brethren. Our lesson today comes from Kylie, chapter 6, verse 11. Our Father, who art spinning around, I can't get you out of my head. Better the devil you know, hand on your heart, especially for you, come into my world and give me just a little more time. Cover me with kisses and cover those who come unto me with kisses also. <laughs> Dear Father, when I go out, I want to go out dancing. Bury me deep in love, forever in fever, in my arms, in your eyes, into the blue, it's the most wonderful time of the year. For I've got to be certain, for the locomotion, for I should be so lucky. And if I ever fall into temptation, tie me kangaroo down sport. <laughs> Dear brethren, on a night like this, we will now sing Hymn number 179, Everybody Needs Good Neighbours. <laughs> no, not yet, not yet, not yet. Just stand, stand, stand up. Follow instructions, right. Okay. Okay, everyone, now, sing along with me and don't drop any bum notes. Neighbours, everybody needs good neighbours. Literature festival, anyone needs a little understanding. You can find the perfect place. Neighbours should be there for one another. That's when good neighbours become good friends. Thank you, Aberystwyth. Return, return to the, the festival. It's his, his comeback. He's part of the family now. One more time for Mark Blaney.